have some people who have called in. Uh -huh. We also have some newsworthy items that we've got to get to. And I'm already freaking out, Beatrice. <laughs> I am already losing my <laughs> because I need, to, I need to talk about this with you. Yes. We're going to start with, should we do newsworthy items or the speak pipe phone calls? Girl, I got to talk about that house. Yeah, let's just go right let's into that. Let's just get into that. Let's go right into the newsworthy item of the week, mm -hmm. which is the fact that it is being reported that Robin and Cody Brown have purchased a new house in Flagstaff, Arizona, valued at approximately... Two point something million? Two point two million, yeah. I think. Million dollars. Million. Meanwhile, the McMansion, or the house that they had put up for sale and then took off the market, is just sitting there, I think. I don't believe it has sold. I don't know. I think if it is sold, like it would reflect that in the MLS yeah. or the realtors out there would have been able to see that. Right. So are you telling me, Beatrice, that these hoes are holding a home with a mortgage currently leveraged to the hilt of about, what, $900,000? Something like that. So probably a $10,000 a month mortgage. I mm -hmm. don't know. Mm -hmm. And... Also purchasing through a trust a $2.2 million home after putting down 400 some odd thousand dollars in a down payment. Yeah. Meaning their mortgage payment is going to be about $20,000. Are you telling Beatrice? Yeah. Beatrice, are you telling me <laughs> that these old Mormon hoes yeah. are able to afford a mortgage for two homes each month of approximately $30,000 hairs? There is no way. There's no way. But also, I could see Cody and Robin trying to like do some weird money shit, move their stuff around. Like, why are they putting a down payment via a trust? What, what, where did that money come from? Whose money is that? Janelle's and Mary's and the families. Exactly. And all of the assets that exactly. perhaps they've cashed in. But like, it is so unfair yeah and so i want to come to you as somebody who's having a bit of an emotional response to this because like it is so whack to yeah. watch two people who are legitimately abusive assholes constantly lying and deceiving on our televisions and just railroading the other wives and all of these children like they're fucking devils beatrice yeah they get to prosper now in an even bigger yet ugly. It's an ugly. It's really ugly. Subjectively an yes. ugly house. An even bigger house. Why? What I, are they getting paid by TLC? I don't know. I'm like, where are you getting all of this money? And also Christine's suing your ass, Cody. Mm -hmm. So like, how do you think you're going to be able to get this house? Like if you're getting sued for backed child support. So there, I feel like there's no way this has to be like fake or mm, something because really? I'm like I just can't I just can't imagine like how stupid you would be but then I was reading on Reddit mm -hmm. and people were saying that if this is true if Cody did actually get this house he's doing this to keep Robin like oh let me buy you another really expensive beautiful house because this is what you wanted to keep you happy like look no we're totally fine like we're not gonna go broke because we lost all three of our income sources. Like, no, 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 it's going to be fine. Like, why in the world would you purchase this house now after you've lost three other streams of income? Um, after, like, it's become obvious, especially yeah. with the passing of your son Garrison, that this show may or may not go on. What if we got maybe one to five more seasons, tops five? Right. I was actually looking at the ratings. I've got them right here just for this year so mm -hmm. season 19 we started off with uh like 817,000 viewers and then we went up to 956,000 and then we went down the next week to 868 and then we went down to 817 and now Ooh. we are down to 805,000 viewers for sister wives so People are sick of it. Mm -hmm. I'm sick of it. Like if we didn't cover this for the pod and if I didn't know that we had all of these raccoons in here just kind of waiting for these recaps, like I wouldn't watch this fucking show. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's so boring, especially with all the Christina and David stuff. I'm like, I don't need to see this. Uh, it's enraging. It's so boring. So I mean, but if this is like your 
innovative production meant to keep us watching like right. it's not working yeah and as soon as kind of the blush is off the rose of all of these women leaving cody brown like people are not going to watch anymore so cody you're buying a 2.2 million dollar home and this show is going to go away in the next couple of years like what are you going to do you're going to have to sell a lot of cameos but maybe robin was right last week when she was saying that she budgeted her money no she prioritized her money a different way no they've got all those assets that they could sell all of that bad art no i mean maybe i'm I'm obviously just shitting the bricks here but is it possible that this is fake news like that mm. they haven't actually purchased this home but it was like his trust his name was on the sale of this house that's what people are saying but i when i posted on it on our instagram people were commenting and and replying to our dm saying that that was fake that it's all a bunch of bullshit. But I'm like, oh, I don't know. There's a lot of people reporting on this. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe it's not fake. Maybe we just want it to be fake because we can't imagine a world that they could be so stupid and privileged and so entitled to think that you even deserve a multi-million dollar mansion like this. A really ugly mansion. I just, it's so unfair. I got so upset. I was up on Reddit. I happened to see somebody post about it like three or four nights ago or whenever it was dropped. And I literally just put my phone away. And I'm like, I, I can't. I had an angry response to it because like that money should be going to everybody else. Like that should be distributed across children and across right. wives. And like, why do you, why are we watching these people hoard all of this wealth and keep it to themselves? And now they're going to just better themselves and right. buy a bigger fucking house yeah it's not fucking cool i gotta i gotta unplug from this family <laughs> for real <laughs> unplug this it's so fucking unfair it's so toxic and i wish that janelle and mary would also try to sue cody because couldn't wouldn't that be so fucking awesome like christine's the only one that's suing mm -hmm. and i mean she's got reason to obviously for the child support of truly and all that whatever but i'm like janelle and mary could have a case they Maybe. I mean, I think there are a lot of lawyers that post on Reddit talking about how like they actually don't have a case because if they gave money to Robin and Cody to buy the McMansion, they probably had to sign some sort of a document mm. that stated that was a gift. And so now they can't go back on that and compel them to give them money. I don't know. But like anybody can sue for anything. Yeah. And just the threat of a lawsuit and ta just taking him through the court, Sonny, yeah. and the court of public opinion might be enough to get some sort of a settlement out of him. But... It just really makes my blood pressure rise. Same. I just can't believe it. I like, can't either. I can't believe it. So I'm just sharing that with y'all. And um, let us know what you guys think. You yeah. can DM uh, Miss Beatrice here on the Instagram. Or you guys can drop a comment on YouTube. We love to read your comments. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. Was there anything else by way of... I, oh, I know Cody Brown also responded to Christine's lawsuit in which she is demanding that he pay child support. Which is a completely normal thing. Like, yeah. I think you have 30 days to respond. And so he acquired an attorney. He made some kind of a response, but it is sealed. So uh, completely private. We don't really know what he had to say. Uh, that's stupid. Unseal it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's their personal business. I don't care. <laughs> but yeah, so that lawsuit seems to be proceeding because I think at the time that it was re reported initially... He had not accepted service of the lawsuit, but he has clearly accepted it now. And we are going forward. And I hope Christine gets everything and more from that man. Well, what's great is that they're going to look at his income. So if you can afford a $2.3 million McMansion, then you're going to be able to afford a lot of child support. I hope you have fun with that. Yeah. I can't wait. We'll see what happens. Okay, so those were the newsworthy items. Mm -hmm. And now let's get on to some of our raccoons. Yeah. Who have called into the dumpster and we have, have a some lot. very important things to say. Yeah. And by the way, they um, called in by going to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. That's speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. You have up to 90 seconds. You can sound off on anything, honey. We love to hear your opinions. We do. So who's the first person to have called? The first one we have is from Tina B. Tina B. Yeah. Hey, um, just wanted to hop on here and agree with y'all when you were talking about how Christine is saying that she doesn't care about her kids' opinions and that she's going to keep on, you know, being inappropriate with David in front of the kids and she doesn't care what they think. You know, to me, this sounds a whole lot like 
when Cody said the same thing about, you know, how he's always worried about that he can't be with Robin all the time. And, you know, the kids understand, you know, being neglected and they understand being put second. And if Christine wants to go ahead and tank her relationships with her kids, this is a really, really good way to start doing that. Just revisiting the ghost of Cody Bass. That's my thought. I agree. Mm. That's what I was talking about last week. Because with my own stuff, with my own family, and this happened with my own parents, with us, they didn't really give a shit if we liked our new step parents or not. And now we don't really have the best relationships, partly because of that. And so I worry about what Christine's doing with little truly. Mm-hmm. I mean, the adults, the adult kids are adult kids, you know, like they're going to be weirded out by it because they've only ever seen their mom with one person, blah, blah, blah. But they're adults like they'll they'll get on with it. Little Truly, though, Mm -hmm. in this episode when she's shoving her mom and acting out, I mean, it's a recipe for disaster, in my opinion. It is. Um, And I just want to co-sign and emphasize, like, her point that the kids are accustomed already to being neglected. And a lot of that, I'm sorry to say, because I know this pisses off some people, but a lot of that has to do with the mothers. It's Mm -hmm. not just Cody directly neglecting the kids. It's the mothers putting up with it. And not demanding more and not like forcing the issue sooner. And so Christine's kids have watched Christine take less on their behalf Mm -hmm. for many, many years and pretty much disregard their needs. And so it's probably not much of a fucking surprise that here she is making out with David Woolley after six weeks on camera in front of them, even though they're a little bit uncomfortable with that, even though, I mean just any reasonable person would tell you like just pump the brakes a little bit at least in front of the kids yeah even in this episode she's like i don't care we're gonna still do it i'm holding his hand i'm gonna make out with this man i don't care what my kids have to say well you've never really cared though have you about Mm. what your kids have needed because Mm. if you had you would have left that bum a long time ago and the same goes for mary and the same goes for janelle such a good point though i mean we need to hold everybody accountable Mm -hmm. in the family i know robin and cody they're abusive pieces of shit but also hello (laughs) you guys stayed with them you guys Mm -hmm. dealt with this for so long when robin got the best of everything when janelle couldn't even feed her kids because robin and mary had to get their fucking nice houses mary had to have her wet bar like all this stupid shit so that's a good point Mm -hmm. thanks tina b thank you all right next one we have is from lola raccoon lola raccoon Ah. oh my goodness Hey, y'all, hey, this is Lola Raccoon from the swampy trash bins of South Louisiana. I love you guys. Anyway, so I have been fascinated after seeing a little bit of the courtship of David and Christine, and we've seen the wedding, and now there's flesh added to the story. I'm just fascinated with wondering how that marriage is going with Christine being touch starved and needing so much validation and attention, and now, like, I guess the quote-unquote honeymoon period is probably past. I'm just wondering how it's going for them. I would pay so much money to be a fly on that wall because he's all up in her shit. She's all up in his shit. And it's a quote-unquote regular, regular marriage. After how many years of Christine living on her own and doing her own thing, and even though she like longed for a regular marriage, definitely not having it with Cody and just, you know, doing so much on her own. She probably admired the idea of marriage, but now that she's in it, I would just love to see more of the reality of that situation because I don't think the pastures are greener, honey. Anyway, love you guys. Can't wait for the next episode. Bye. (laughs) Lola. The pasture is greener if it's not Cody's pasture. <laughs> I mean, honey. If it's not his curly cues, anything <laughs> is better than Cody. Although I totally understand her point. Yeah. I mean, I've been married a few times. Uh-huh. First couple of times I thought, oh, my God, it's going to be so magical. It's a whole new world. Nope. <laughs> After the same three or four years, you kind of settle into a very familiar rhythm. That's mm-hmm. what marriage is. And so if Christine does have ideas like, oh, my God, this is my soulmate. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an absolute fabulous unicorn fairy dust experience. No, at some point, we're going to have to tip over into what marriage is, which is just this, again, this rhythm, this companionability. It's not always going to be super energetic. It's just going to be we're together. We're in bed. We're reading. This is who we are. Exactly. Is that going to be enough for Christine? 
I don't know. And I mean, I was just thinking about it while I was listening to Lola talk. Like, David's older than her. He's like eight years older. He's 60 almost, right? So, I mean, parts are going to stop working. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm yeah. just saying. I'm not trying to body shame, but that's just the natural <laughs> order of things. Sure. Right? And but Christine, there's pills for that and such. Yeah, but I mean. And there's toys Christine and everything. Christine wants that energy. Mm. She wants that sweet, sweet loving. She wants that PDA. I mean, we see it in this episode when they're talking about the master bedroom. And then, like, eh! In the hot tub. That's what she wants, yes. right? She wants a physical connection, a sensual seduction. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she's going to be okay with like the monotony that comes with marriage for a long time. I mean, she was okay with it with Cody because she didn't have to see him all the time. She was alone all the time. So I think Lola makes a good point. Like, yeah, she was romanticizing the idea of marriage. But maybe it'll work. Maybe. I mean, I think... If anybody's going to start noping out of the marriage, it's probably David because, I mean, he seems, correct me if I'm wrong, he seems pretty laid back. Yeah. He seems pretty low key in terms of like how he lives his life and to all of a sudden be tied to a woman who is just like so much always on 10 Mm -hmm. this one goes to 11 yeah like she's always always on it would probably be a lot to deal with but maybe that's what his life needed maybe maybe he was looking for a little bit of magic he was looking for some light and here comes christine and that's all she is yeah i don't really know for me that would be exhausting i'd be like shut the (laughs) fuck shut the fuck up Just let me sit out here on the patio smoking a fucking joint and yep. having a glass of wine and stop talking, bitch. Chill out. Stop talking. For real. She's that would so be fucking me, annoying. But maybe David loves it. Maybe. I mean, they do have matching tattoos. Uh-huh. They are each other's soulmates. Sure. So maybe this is a forever thing. But I don't know. I'm watching these episodes. I'm like, you guys are moving so fast. Yeah. Christine is so cringe. Oh, my God. Yeah. And so needy. Like, needs a lot. Which is not, like, necessarily a bad thing. But I'm just like, is David going to get tired of that? Because I would. Maybe. But I really love seeing how David recognizes that yeah. in her. Like, he says she deserves to have, like, a wedding where she feels like a princess or she feels like a beautiful queen like that is something she deserves i want to give that to her that's sweet so i feel like in this phase of their relationship he really wants to serve her in that way but at some point like does that get old right do i need to continue to serve your neediness or are you okay now are you secure are we good who knows yeah we'll have to keep watching Oh my God, it would be so interesting to see yes. how they've evolved though. So that in terms of like a show in the future. I'd be like into. Who is Mary dating? What is Janelle doing on her yeah. farm? And how are Christine and David managing their Airbnb? Right. I would love to watch that. Cody and Robin? Fuck you. Not so much. Go broke. Not so much. Yeah. Well, thank you for that, Lola. Thanks, Rex. Lola. We love you. All right. Next one is from Stephanie. Hello, ladies. This is Stephanie, a raccoon from the dumpster of Denver, Colorado. Uh, Love the show. I love that you guys have a slightly different opinion sometimes than I do, um, specifically with Plathville and Olivia. Um, But that's what makes the world go round. I appreciate uh, not having everyone love Olivia all the time. (laughs) Um, But my question to you is, who do you dislike more or cringe more Olivia or Tony and McKelty? Love the show. Once again, keep doing your thing. Can't wait to hear more. (laughs) That is so hard. Who do I cringe more with? Yeah. Oh, God. You first. I mean, because do you cringe at Olivia? You cringe at Mariah. Do we cringe at Olivia? I mean, I've only been cringing at Olivia when she's been in scenes with Brendan. Yes, that's true. That is so turbo cringe. It's so gross. Yes. I don't want to see it ever again. But if we're just talking about just Olivia and just McKelty and Tony, I feel like they're more cringe. Yeah. Because they're fake. And yes. they're annoying. And they're they're stupid. Yeah, they're so funny. They're dumb. dumb. Olivia's not a dumb Olivia's person. Olivia's at least smart. Yeah. I would say she's a very calculating person. Yeah. She's like hyper aware, hyper vigilant when mm-hmm. it comes to her persona and such. Yeah. Whereas McKelty and Tony just don't have the intelligence to understand that they probably should be too. Yeah. <laughs> 
so they let themselves be put on yeah. this television show and looking like ridiculous people yeah. i do cringe i'm like oh shut up you're Please so dumb stop talking but you know so many people are on their patreon I know. why aren't you on our patreon Rude. our patreon's better we're smarter <laughs> we're we don't give a fuck yeah. we're not going to censor how we feel about <laughs> cody brown no but anyway they have so many people on their Patreon, I think just validating this idea of their mm-hmm. self-importance. And I'm just like, oh, God. That, too, is very cringe. Very, very cringe. They think they're so awesome. And it's, like, mainly McKelty. I feel like McKelty drives that. Tony's just along for the ride because he's broke, too. <laughs> and he doesn't want to work. Yeah. I just want to be, like, a, uh, a chess master. For real. I just, I got tacos to eat. That's like, right. <laughs> how are you going to pay for that? Come on. McKelty is just her mom's daughter mixed with Cody. And it's... A terrible combo. It's bad. <laughs> it's a terrible <laughs> combo. Yeah. I do really appreciate what um, you have to say, though, about being able to listen to people who might have different opinions or different yeah. takes on these, you know, a variety of different reality television people. Like, people go so hard. Beatrice, I was up on Reddit today just reading people trashing Christine. Oh my and then God. there'd be like one or two posts where people are like, let Christine live. <laughs> Oh this to- this po- this subreddit is so toxic. But like we had these middle aged women in these subreddits calling other women cunts. Oh my god! I'm like, honey, what the it's fuck? not that serious. It's sister We're wives. talking about sister wives on TLC. You don't have to call your friend on Reddit a cunt. Oh my god! Jesus <laughs> crackers! People take it serious, and people can't brook or put up with a dissenting opinion oh yeah for sure it's just like with olivia plath like people go off on me mm-hmm. on reddit mm-hmm. on this podcast you deserve for my it opinion. Well, sh- fuck you <laughs> you deserve it but they do like they go off on me and call me a bad person for my opinions they call, on- into, <laughs> they call yeah. into question your character as a it's human like, being sharing their planet what the F? as opposed to somebody who's just really finding it cringe yeah that olivia's talking about love right. with our vagina chested <laughs> dog walker <laughs> Jesus, it's not that for deep. Real. It is not that deep, everybody. Oh, so thank you, Stephanie, thank for being you. like a level-headed person and appreciating that we can agree to disagree. Very much so. We really appreciate it. You're based it. and we love it. You're based. I love Denver, too. I lived there for like, what, five uh, years? Five, five years. years. Yeah. yeah. That, you love it there. You. I, 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 would, I would move back, not to Denver proper. Yeah. I would move back to Colorado in a heartbeat, bitch. 100. Yes. All right. Last one we have is from Kendra Seymour. Okay. Hi, Kendra. Hey, so I love you guys. I love being one of the reality TV cringe raccoons. I love this dumpster fire. I watch it every week. I do the Patreon. Uh, my name is Kendra, and I'm kind of new to you guys. Like, as soon as I found you guys, I started subscribing to the Patreon. But um, I would have loved, like, love, 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 like, would have died with happiness. Um, if instead, of, like, whenever Cody said, I would have continued to fake it, if she would have popped back off, if Mary would have popped back off with, you know, what? I'm glad that you faked it in public. I had to fake it in private. I say we both just quit because this is not a Shakespearean play. We're just done. I'm done faking things for you. You're done faking things for me. And let me tell you, baby, my job of faking it was so much harder. (laughs) And I did such a better job for you. You think you're so macho. But I gotta tell you, that catfish talked a better game than you could ever, ever do physically don't you think that says a lot about you oh my god that would have been so good (laughs) if mary would have said that but she never would she never even in this episode kendra she's sitting there in front of nathan (laughs) fucking nathan (laughs) and rebecca and cody and she's like i would still be working on it I'm absolutely willing to work on it, but it's Cody who just can't go on. And so for his sake, I've got to pull the plug. I'm like, Jesus Christ, Mary, are we not watching the same television show? Are you not? I know you're seeing the shit he's saying about you because you're referencing it in your talking heads. You saw the way he was talking about you. And yet in this moment, you're still sitting across from this bozo. For real. And you're still giving him all of this credit. Like I would absolutely, I would 100% still be in it. If it weren't for how he felt. Ew. Ew. Gets worthy up. Hashtag worthy up. Worthy up. Take your own advice. Uh, man, it would have been so good, though, mm-hmm. if she could have said some shit about faking 
sex with him and orgasms with him because mm-hmm. that's what we're all insinuating all we these know women. on an energetic I mean, and spiritual level i have a witnessing response <laughs> I've got a testimony, as it were, that he's got small dick energy, for sure, thin dick energy, yep. and absolutely no game. Not at all. No game, bitch. Do you think Robin fakes it? Probably. Oh my god, why? For the money. Oh my. God. For the two point two million dollar home that she doesn't deserve. For the fame. Oh my god. There's easier ways to do it, though. Probably, but like, just look at all of us in this dumpster. We're living in a dumpster. We're true. working hard, bitch, for the <laughs> little true. that we have in this world. We're paying these prices at the gas pump. That's true. We're going to the Kroger having our minds blown at the yeah. prices. And these bitches, these hoes, <laughs> get to acquire another home at 2.2 million, 8,000 square feet. Bullshit. With, with a guest house. With a guest house and a huge garage. All yeah. these outbuildings. Jesus Oh my god. We're oh blue collar raccoons somebody, over here. Somebody help me. <laughs> I know. Somebody help me to calm oh, down. They will get their comeuppance, girl. I know it. Karma is a bitch. Jojo Siwa was right with that. <laughs> it's gonna happen for them. It only works if you do the dance too. Well, I can't that's for Patreon. <laughs> Oh my god! But I people across the internet yeah. have been saying that like in five years, they're going bankrupt. Yeah. They're selling that home. Yeah. If they're not selling home, they're foreclosing on that bitch because yeah. like this is not sustainable. No. The rest of us can see it. Mm-hmm. It is a spectacle. Unless he's getting a lot in cameo, you can make some good money on cameo. All the ninety day fiance people do that. Unless he gets an OnlyFans like the the ninety day oh, fiance god. people, <laughs> Robin can do her break dancing on OnlyFans. If Cody Brown. God and only fans. I would die. With Robin. Oh my God, I'd subscribe so fast. Oh my God, I would subscribe too. It would be a dual subscription. It would be so I would good. absolutely be watching that. Oh my God. For sure. Oh my, they're going to have to resort to they're that. They're going to have to think about it at some point because they're unemployable and yeah. they're despicable people who wants to hire them at the 7 Eleven. They're awful people <laughs> and they steal. They do. So no, you can't work for my business, bitch. Bitch. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that is it. Thank you so much to all of you for calling in on the speak pipe. Again, all you have to, it's not a call. I'm such a boomer. Yeah. It's the thing you do on your computer or on your phone. (laughs) All you have to do is go to speakpipe.com slash reality TV cringe. Let us know what you're thinking. We'll probably play it on the pod. Yep. And so thank you guys so much for being with us. Thank you. We love you guys so much.